Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at using the binomial distribution in Excel. So I have Excel open and I have a couple of things written down already. So we're going to assume that our x, our random variable, is a binomial distribution with 20 being n, the um, number of trials, and p being the probability of a success. So there are, uh, we're doing something 20 times, the probability of something happening that we're interested in is 0.4. So we're going to look at some basic probability types, P, uh, the probability of x equaling a number, the probability of x being less than or equal to a number, the probability of x being greater than or equal to a number. Those are the three most basic ones, and then we're going to see some other variations of it. So the first thing we want to do is look at what values does this actually include. So the probability that x equals 3 has the value of 3. In order to find that value, I am going to use the Excel command binomial distribution. I'm going to put it off over here. So equals, because we want Excel to do the math, binom.dist. So B-I-N-O-M for binomial, dot D-I-S-T for distribution. So if we look at binom.dist, it returns the individual term binomial distribution probability. That's what we want open it, and then there are a bunch of things we have to type in. So number, and then it says S, that is the number that we're interested in inside the probability. So our number for this case is 3, comma, the number of trials, that's 20, comma, the probability, that's my point 0.4, comma, and then the cumulative. So there are two options. You can type in the words true and false, or you can type in zero for false and one for true. So true says cumulative distribution function. It returns the cumulative distribution function, which is the probability that there are at most number of um, successes. So you can't really see it, so it so says at most number successes. If I go down to false, it returns the probability that there are the number of successes. So I want equal to 3, so I want this false one where it's just the probability that there are 3 successes. So I'm going to put in a 0, which is the same thing as false. And I get 0 0.0123. So over here I'm going to type in what I just typed in, but without the equal sign, so that it will stay up here. So I did binome.dist, 3 the number I'm interested in, 20, the number of trials, 0.4, the probability, and then 0, because I only have one number that I'm interested in. Okay, so again, this is what I typed in, this is with the equal sign, so it does the math. For the probability that x is less than or equal to a number, so in this case I did 12, the values that that can be are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 12. This is exactly what we saw with the 1. So what I'm going to do over here is equals binom.dist. Again, the number of trials, uh, the number that we're interested in, sorry, is 12. The number of trials is 20. Probability is still 0.4. But now I want to do the true or the 1. I want the probability that there are at most 12 successes. So I'm going to do a 1. And again, I'm going to type over here what I did. So 12, 20, point four, one. And I'll make this a little wider. So in the zero means the probability that x is three. The one, which is the same thing as the true, means at most three, or at most 12 in this case. So it goes from the zero to 12. Here, I kind of have the opposite. Instead of less than or equal to 12, or at most 12, I now have greater than or equal to a number, which is the same thing as at least. So x greater than or equal to 7 is at least 7 successes. Now that's not one of the options in the binom.dist. We need to get around that by using the complement. So the complement of at least 7 is at most 6. So what I'm going to be doing, and I'll put this off to the side, 
is I'm actually using the fact that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 7 is equal to 1 minus the probability of the complement, which is the probability that x is less than or equal to 6. So all the numbers not in here are 0 through 6, which is less than or equal to 6. Right, so what I'm going to type in, and I'm going to do it here first without the equal sign, is 1 minus binome dot dist, my number, the trials, the probability, and then 1. So I want to get rid of 0 through 6, and that's exactly what this guy is saying. So now I'll do it with the equal sign so the math will come out. So 1 minus binome dot dist. Again, the number I'm interested in is 6, because that's this guy over here. 20 trials, 0.4 probability, cumulative, because I want to get rid of everything from 0 to 6. And I get a probability of 0.749989. Okay, so whenever I have greater than or equal to, I need to use the complement. Because again, the binome.dist only gives me equal to or less than or equal to. We're going to see this come up with a quite a few distributions. It's that way for the binomial distribution, the Poisson distribution, the normal distribution, and the T distribution, which we're going to use throughout the course. So it's always either equal to or less than or equal to. So for example, let's go, we'll skip that one for now, probability that x is greater than 15. So we just did greater than or equal to 7, but now we're doing strictly greater than. So if I'm greater than 15, and remember binomials are a discrete, you have to be an integer. So if I'm bigger than 15, I'm either 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20. So what I want to do is, again, this is a greater than, I need to change it to a less than. So I need to write it in terms of its complement. So the probability that x is greater than 15, the opposite of that is the probability that x is less than 15, or less than or equal to 15, sorry. Less than or equal to 15. So just writing it out in complementary mode. So again, the probability that x is greater than 15 is 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 15. So notice in this case I have 15 and I still have 15. Over here I had 7 and that changed to 6 and that's because I had the equal to 7 over here. But I don't have equal to 15 over here. So again, what I'm going to have to do is 1 minus the binomial distribution. So less than or equal to 15 will be binome.dist. 15, the number I'm interested in. 20, the number of trials. 0.4, the probability. And then 1, um, the fact that I want from 0 to 15. And then if I want to find the actual number, I'll do the same exact thing, but with the equals in front. So 15, 15, 20, 0.41. I get a fairly small number, right? Remember, the um, probability of having one of them happen is 0.4. So the fact that I'm going to have 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20 of them is going to be fairly low. It's less than a 50-50 shot of having a single one. So next we'll go back up to this one. So the probability that x is greater than 4 and less than 16, or the probability that 4 is less than x is less than 16. So we got to be careful about the equal sign when we're talking about discrete data. So if I'm greater than 4, I have to start at 5. And if I'm less than 16, I can go up to 15. So I want from 5 to 15, which means I don't want 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So to figure out this probability, again, I have to put it as either an equals or a less than or equal to. So I have a range here. So I want 
Oops, that should be 15, not 16. Oh, no, that was right, 16. So 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to, because that's my only option here, 4. And that's not true, actually, because I don't want 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. Right, that would give me 15 through 20. I want, uh, sorry, 5 through 20. I want 5 through 15. So instead of a 1 here, I'm going to take the probability that x is less than or equal to 15. So when we see a range of values in the middle from something to something, and it's not 0 to the maximum, so two numbers in the middle, we're going to take the probability of the bigger one minus the probability of the smaller one, depending on where the equal sign is. So again, I want up to 15, so that's the probability that x is less than or equal to 15. I don't want 0 through 4, so I want to get rid of 0 through 4. Okay. So if this had been x less than or equal to 16, this would be 16, but less than 16 is less than or equal to 15. So I always need to write it in terms of less than or equal to. And that's it in just probability speaking. If I want to put it in using the Excel words, again, I'll do it first without the equal sign. So it's binom.dist 15, 20, 0.41. So that will give me 0 to 15. And then I need to subtract binom.dist 4, 20.41. I don't want 0 through 4. And then again, I'll do it with the equal sign so that we get a number. Four, twenty, Again, that's going to be a good chunk of them because 5 through 15 is a lot of our numbers from 0 to 20, so the probability of it being between 5 and 15 should be fairly high. Okay. So let's try one more. The probability that x that, that 6 is less than or equal to x is less than 18. So x being greater than or equal to 6 means I start at 6. x being less than 18 means I end at 17. Okay, so again, there's no equal sign here, so I'm not going to 18, I'm going to 17. So how can I write this in form that Excel will accept? So here's what I have, the probability that 6 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 18. So I want 6 through 17, so I'm going to start with 0 through 17, which is x less than or equal to 17 and then I need to get rid of 0 through 5. So I need to subtract the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. Let me go bring that over too. Okay, so again, here x less than or equal to 17 gives me 0 through 17, this guy. And then I'm going to subtract 0 through 5 because I want 6 to 17. So it's going to look very similar to the 1, 2 above it. Binom.dist 17.20.41 minus binom.dist uh, 520.41. So I always find it helpful to do something like this where I actually write out the numbers that I need so that I can see what I'm subtracting from what. So it's either going to be straight up binom.dist. My, um, my value in here, so my number, my trials, my probability, and then zero if it's equal to a number. So probability x equal to three. Again, I have that zero at the end right here. Or if it's already in the form probability x less than or equal to a number, I'll exchange that zero for a one. Or I am doing some type of subtraction. So if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, 
I'm going to subtract my binomial distribution from 1. If it's with between two numbers, I'm going to do a binomial minus a binomial. And again, to finish it off, I'm going to do my last one with the equal sign so that we get a number. Okay, so again, just be really careful about what numbers you're actually including. Remember, a binomial is discrete, so there's nothing between 15 and 16. There's nothing between 3 and 4. Okay, so if you're less than an integer, you are less than or equal to the integer below it. So if I'm less than uh, le greater than 4 in this case, I am greater than or equal to 3. Okay. So you got to just remember, I need it to be greater than or equal to, so I need to watch out for these greater thans or strictly less thans to change them. Okay, so play around with it and let me know if you have any questions.